That's the sofa seal. That's the sofa seal. Uh, apple juice, I see an apple ties. You tell me apple juice, nigga. Guys, fun fact my sister ordered this burger simply because it had this smiley face thingy. <laughs> Seen my sister excited but this takes the cup i highly highly recommend this nail tech she's in scott if ever you're in south coast love love her If you are new here, Igama Ngu Asanda Warantini, and welcome here. Um, this video has brought the idea of me speaking about a huge topic during December holidays, especially amongst uh, single parents or parents who are not married but share a child, people that are not married but share children. So basically, you have children but you are no longer dating, no longer in a relationship, no longer married, which is the right to access your child or the right for your child to visit you during December holidays. Let's speak about this and remember none of my videos are legal advice. If you are looking for legal advice, please go and speak to a practitioner, book a consultation with any practitioner around your area. There's even people that do consultations online and you'll be fine. Anyways, with that said, let us speak about this. I swear I'm not always very greasy. <laughs> I'm not always like this. It's at night and I already have done my night routine. Look at my nails. Okay, yeah, you would have seen them just now. <laughs> Anyways, I'm obsessed with those. Um, let us speak about this in a serious context. So the act in question is the children's act 38 of 2005 and if you are speaking of parental responsibilities and rights and you want to understand them in full context look at section 18 of this particular act that i'm speaking of it tells you the right to uh the responsibilities that you have responsibility to maintain to to maintain to um guardianship all of those those are rights that are stipulated by the act in terms of section 18 and then in terms of section 23 if i'm not mistaken but okay not 23 section 21 of the act talks about the acquisition of parental rights and responsibilities responsibilities and rights of unmarried fathers which is very important you do not automatically get this right. There are certain things that you must do in order for you to get this right. For example, if you've completed like paying damages, it speaks of it in the context of 
doing all the traditional requirements or whatever it is so if you've done that uh you are maintaining you are maintaining reasonable contact with the child you continue to do things like that show that you are interested in the child's life you do get to keep this right and for people that are also like grandparents uncles who are taking care of children not just any uncles but who are actively in the lives of children that are showing interest in the care and well-being and the development of the child and you want to apply to to court to now have a right to access this child or to get full guardianship of the child you apply you 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 don't just apply to court you, you you do this if you have this interest please look at section 23 of the children's act and you can do this maybe in divorce court if you guys are doing divorce proceedings you put it in a settlement on how the parents are uh if you are getting divorced and now you no longer have the automatic right that comes with being married and living with the person you now have to have a parenting plan you do that so it applies to people like those as well not just people that are interested you apply for for that in the high court and also in the children's court so you do have a right in terms of that now um i'm going to be discussing yes i have notes down i'm going to be discussing the issue of access to a child and how it could impact you through looking at the case which deals with the interstate succession act i know we are now going west i've mentioned a different act now this act i'm bringing it up because of a particular 2021 case that happened in johannesburg and um, it says that you which speaks on how you can lose a right to a child which would be very important if in a way if you are preparing your arguments as a candidate attorney to say or as an attorney or whoever it is that's watching preparing your arguments to say okay look at that at this case i'll put the correct citation in the link in the description box rather uh i will butcher this name shame in wellnet uh versus tm and others in 2020 it's a 2021 case so here this is what happened a child died when they were five the child was born um as a disabled child when she was born as a disabled child the disability was not that of like nature where you they, you you get disabled and get and 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 be born disabled there were complications during childbirth and uh they had cerebral cerebral pa palsy oh oh caused by lack of oxygen during child to the brain during childbirth so the child thereafter died after litigation against the minister of health was settled and an amount of 21 million was granted as an order of court to for damages for the negligence of staff of department of health you get it now this is how the child was staying so child was staying with her grandma with his grandmother and his mother his mother was not present in her life after two years she will when she gave birth to a child that's now disabled she started having issues of like mental let's just call them mental issues and she couldn't connect with the child but obviously stayed in the house of her grandmother not her grandmother of her mother who's the grandmother of the child and she was not pre she was not employed but would even would just disappear for days and end until the grandmother decided okay this child who's my grandchild needs to be taken care of what i'm going to do is i'm going to quit my job as a hairdresser and start taking care of this child as my own because obviously as a grandparent when you're when the other person is missing in action you'd rather take care of the child instead of getting like um social workers involved or whatever it is if you you you, you want to do it that way some others just involve social workers and say take over but this is not the case the grandma decided to quit her job and take care of the child full time from the age of two when the mother was now mixing in action and yeah so that's what happened so after 
obviously the award is given i think it was given in 2017 or end of 2017 a trust was opened and then in ben and then the child was obviously the beneficiary of the trial of the trust and then the child died in 20 in 2018 the curator was appointed obviously for the trust and then the curator in turn became the uh the executor of the estate of the child and then upon death the father miraculously showed up and said they should be uh they should be uh what's this word they want to benefit from the estate of the child as the child died interstate and in interstate succession ideally the parents benefit but what's before court now is to determine is this person are these people the mother and the father and the grandmother who exactly is the parent of this child so obviously before before we even get to this court before it even got to the place of the father the father trying to now uh, get to succeed the that cricket to fireworks to succeed from the to basically be a successor in the estate of the child there was previous litigation where the, the grandmother wanted to attain parental rights of the child before the child even died which were actually granted to the grandmother but obviously the order was granted a few days before the the child actually died unfortunately so the recommendations of the family advocating this matter was that uh, the right should be given to the mother and the grandmother as they as they lived in the house of the grandmother obviously and said that the father although he's by he's a biological father he has not provided any con uh, contribution towards the need of the needs of the child not played any role in the parenting and the upbringing of the child since birth so he did not have any compliance with section 21 of the uh, of the children's act and cannot be found to be a holder of parental responsibilities and rights so back then he didn't have the right see to be a father but now comes back and says okay Minagoto, i want to now benefit because this is my child that's what 21 million does to people mother obviously uh agreed that okay i am not uh agreed that it's in the best interest of the child that her mother being the grandmother of the child remain the rights be given to her to be the mother as her social circumstances the disappearing acts did not allow for a child with a disability or a special needs child however she would continue to maintain reasonable contact with the child so then obviously after that um they said okay cool we are giving you this right continue you'll be fine regard that those were the recommendations of the family advocate but after numerous uh analysis in the case you're going to read the case if you want to read it the court eventually now in the in the issue of of succession whether can the father and the mother and who exactly should benefit from this money that was awarded to the special needs child that had um been awarded there were many obviously many submissions done by all the parties in, involved and most importantly uh the grandmother because obviously they are the only one who does not who their biological link is very distant instead of the biological link of the mother and the father so this is what the court found again not just on recommendation of the of the family advocate said the father was not a parent as in terms of section one of the interstate succession act it did not meet the factual or legal requirements of a father of parenthood rather his biological link was simply being a biological by fact obviously by fact because one got in got pregnant yada 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 the child got it so but there was there's no legal consequences that that uh that he had there's no legal um things that is done in order to prove that actually he's interested in the well-being of the child in the in anything that has to do with the child besides the money thus is not a parent and as such is not entitled to inherit from the estate of this deceased special needs child and then obviously in terms of the mother it says that 
obviously from birth she acquired the responsibilities and rights of a child you gave birth to this person she had the responsibility to maintain contact and contribute towards maintenance and building a relationship as a parent but obviously because of the circumstances around her court gave her grace that yeah we understand but obviously you didn't just throw the kid away you gave it to your mother who then take took care of it the relationship was badged and a third party had to take over because of all third party being the third respond respondent had to take over because of all of the issues that she had regarding like now being such a young person getting a special needs child and then so they are entitled to inherit and um their rights to parent were not terminated in any way because obviously they met the right the 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 the, the status quo of like saying a reasonable contact with the child all of those and then the grandmother being the third respondent in this case had a biological link obviously of being a grandmother factually and legally had the responsibilities rights and guardianship of the child the child was taken care of she was the guardian so then obviously she is the parent and is allowed to inherit so you see how you sometimes could lose your right to be a father in a child's life instead of coming with december and saying that no i want to see my child i gave birth to this child uh i helped you give birth to this child at this ask yourself before you start a fight before you go into court ask yourself am i doing enough to show in terms of section 21 that i am a father as the requirements as do i have reasonable contact and care for the child as the act requires me to do and have i done any of the things that i'm supposed to do maybe i've maintained them moderately it doesn't have to happen every month it doesn't have to be ten thousand rand it has to be that you are showing a bit of interest and you are doing something for the well-being of the child so yeah again there's another case that i wanted to mention i'm just seeing it i wrote it here as well uh, it's also an, an estate thingy Robert Sims and estate of Brandon Michael where he maintained this guy was a married man who had a child but uh, didn't want to disclose that he had a child while the child was still alive and he had any contact but obviously sent money but decided it is convenient for him to be an absent father. So the court found that him forsaking his statutory parental duty to have contact because it is a statutory requirement that you have contact with the child you could not to add to duty to both provide yes he provided he was sending money and maintain a um so then his his, his right although he was maintaining it shrinked so then he could not inherit from the money of this child as well so see what you all are digging for yourselves i'm not just saying that obviously be mindful but you could be inheriting but ways in which you could lose your right are not limited ways that you could keep your right are not limited to the fact that you are giving you've given birth to this child and you've done this and this and that anyways i have blabbed for 16 minutes and there's a video before this so yeah um i hope you guys uh have a great festive season and i hope that if you are looking to see your children have me uh, you are maintaining a, a relationships with your children contact them contact them at least once a week it doesn't have to be much send them uh at least 100 random a week it doesn't matter you don't need to do too much if you can't you can't but you have to show effort if ever you want to now bring a fight to court that they are denying you a right to access your child you have something serious you have something solid to say i've been contacting this child whenever i see them i give them 10 rand i give them 100 and whatever it is those are things that you are going to show court that you are actually a parent to this child and deserve the responsibilities and rights that are involved in raising this child hope you are all doing well and yeah love you lots i will see you on my next video happy holidays mm -hmm.